Hey everyone, Hedgedog here. So I'm doing a bit of a different episode this time. I tried to make a regular episode, but I kept scrapping the video and restarting it until I realized that the regular progression type video just isn't going to work out for this episode. So instead, I'll do a fairly quick recap of the missions that I did since the last video, and then I'll give you a bit of a heads up on what's expected in the coming episodes. So as you can see here, I'm launching yet another Plushina 1. So I don't want to bore you with the whole mission, as basically it's just another low Earth orbit mission. And basically what I'm doing is sending another satellite to the very specific orbit, just like the previous polar satellite contract. Except this time it's an inclination, I think uh, 40.7 degrees. And after I get this requirement, I just boost up to a higher altitude and I snag two more contracts with the same satellite. So that's a very sweet deal. Lots of funds received. Pretty boring stuff though. So next up, I finally had a contract to set up a communications network. So I had the option to choose from a three or four satellite network. The four satellite option bringing lucrative amounts of funds, also being significantly more difficult. And naturally, that's the one I picked. So I got to work right away and it was just hell. It was the most difficult contract ever. It sucked just so so much. Now, I'll give you a few details on what made this contract so, so difficult and why it sucked so much. Um, the network obviously needed to be comprised of four satellites, right? But each satellite needed to be launched separately, which means there is a significant time delay between each launch. And that's going to be very important later. I didn't realize this at first. Each satellite needs to have a minimum altitude. If that makes sense. Also, it needs to have an eccentricity of under 0 0.04 so that's very much near a circle and again that's going to be pretty dang important for the next uh, for the next bit because each satellite needs to have a direct link to two others which means eventually they just form a square where every satellite sees two others and that's how you get a uh, perfect cover um, which is what you need for the last uh, section here. You need at least 60% of Earth covered at all times, which is fairly easy if you get the rest of everything. So I ended up launching nine satellites, three different configurations. Uh, the first four just weren't on the same plane. I figured I could just kind of, you know, send them up there without really caring too much and hoping that would work. It did not. Uh, I couldn't get the coverage over, I think, 45%. It just didn't work. Um, so I tried again. I had one more. I tried a different kind of satellite. Um, it it just didn't deploy properly. So I had to scrap that design and design another one. And the last design was good. But oh my god. It just took forever. I had to get all four satellites on exactly the same plane. With exactly the same altitude. Because they need to have an extremely low eccentricity. Which means they need to have the same orbital period or else they drift apart between launches right you launch one of them it's up there you launch the second one at exactly the right time you want to launch it to have um you know this nice spacing of 90 degrees from the previous one that's great but if they don't have the exact same orbital period then by the time it takes to launch the next one they've drifted they're no longer in the same spot so it took me very very long i stopped recording significant portions of this because it was just so tedious and yeah now you're just watching the final result i eventually got it and and that's it I'm not doing it again um i did get a ton of funds it was i think over six hundred thousand, which is a lot not and yeah it was a great relief to finally get this mission out of the way so that's where we are now. And I think that it's finally time to address the Kerbals that are capped out near the administration building. Uh, they're protesting their right to have a place in the program, and I get it. I mean, they're just... That's exactly what they were born for. They were made for this space program, and I've kind of been ignoring them this far. So I think it's finally time to let them enjoy this space program. They're going to be going on planes first, obviously. You just don't start sending Kerbals to space right away. This isn't the stock uh, the stock game. This is the realism overhaul. So we don't start sending people to space before we put them on planes first and have them die in fiery crashes. Hopefully not, but you know that's also part 
of being a Kerbal. So, anyway, they were born for this. They're ready for this. They want to do it, and I think it's time. So let's put some Kerbals in the sky. That's it. That's it for this short recap. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.